Aggregates are an important and integral component of concrete. They control several aspects of a concrete mix. It is important for us to understand their functions and the impacts that they can have on our concrete mix. The purpose of this video is to describe the functions of aggregates in a concrete mix. I'll also be talking about the impacts that aggregates can have on a concrete mix. There's also the classification system that we need to talk about when it comes to aggregates, so how aggregates are classified. And then finally, this important aspect of gradation of aggregates, so how aggregates are graded in a concrete mix. Let's start by looking at the functions of aggregates. The first and most important function of an aggregate in a concrete mix is to resist high loads that are sustained on a concrete structure. So these aggregates thus have to be strong enough to sustain these loads. Another important reason or function of aggregates being present in a concrete mix is because it acts as a cheap fill. If you compare it to cement, aggregates are cheaper than cement and hence it's better to have a concrete mix more economically feasible to have an, a concrete mix that's composed of more aggregates compared to cement. Aggregates also help combat volume changes that take place due to moisture loss in a concrete mix and also volume changes that are due to the setting and the hardening of the uh, concrete. In terms of its impact on the mix, aggregates, generally speaking, we know that they're composed of 60 to 75 percent of your concrete mix. They need to be inert. So they have to resist loads that are imposed on the concrete structure, and that's important to select strong aggregates. But at the same time, you might, must show that they are not chemically reactive. So you don't want aggregates that react with your concrete mix. If aggregates were to react with your mix, then you might face issues in terms of um, you know, expansion that is not desirable in your concrete structure. The other important thing that you have to consider is that aggregates, depending on the type of aggregates that you use in a concrete mix, that will influence the workability of your concrete mix. So how easy it is to deal with your concrete during transportation and during pouring. And this will depend on the size, the texture of the aggregate and the type of the aggregate that's used in a concrete mix. So an important question would be, how do you know which aggregates are good to utilize in a concrete mix? There's several points that you need to consider and these are shown on the screen in front of you. Number one, as I said, they have to be inert. So the aggregates have to be inert, no chemical reaction with your concrete mix. Uh, the aggregates have to be free from organic matter, again, related to the first point where you don't want the aggregates interfering with the behavior of your concrete structure eventually. The aggregates need to be graded well. The, the better graded the, uh, the aggregates, the better the workability of the overall mix and the better the compactness of the mix. And this is what we desire to achieve in a concrete mix. The aggregates, they need to be of a good surface texture and also they have to be low in voids. How do you classify aggregates? There's several classifications that are adopted for aggregates. The first classification that's used is whether an aggregate is artificial versus natural. So it's a natural aggregate if it's produced by nature. An example of an aggregate that's, that would be classified as a natural aggregate would uh, be sand gravel and stone. Artificial aggregates on the other hand are mostly byproducts. So for instance, slag is an example. Another classification system relies on the geological origin of the aggregates. So you have aggregates that can be classified as igneous rocks. And these igneous rocks are formed from magma. So magma comes from volcanoes, for example. An example of that would be granite as an aggregate. You have your sedimentary rocks as well, and these are formed due to weathering impacts. So the weather sort of um, breaking down tiny particles and then depositing them somewhere else, and these accumulate over the years. An example of an aggregate that's classified as a sedimentary rock is your limestone, and then you have your metamorphic rock, and these are rocks that are formed under high heat and high pressure. And an example of a metamorphic rock 
is uh, marble. A third classification system relies on the shape of the aggregates, and there's three main shapes. Uh, you have angular aggregates, rounded and elongated. Now, the shape, as I said, will impact the workability of the overall concrete mix. So it's important that you have rounded aggregates in your mix because uh, they're usually smoother for the mix sort of to move around. Um, angular aggregates are good if you're trying to increase the friction forces between uh, the aggregates and the cement binder. So generally speaking, you need to maintain a balance between these two uh, shapes of aggregates. Another classification system relies on the surface texture to classify the aggregates. So for instance, you can have aggregates that have a rough texture versus aggregates that have a smooth texture. Now, if you've got aggregates that are smooth, your concrete mix is more workable. It's easy to move around. Uh, if you have rough uh, aggregates, then you have a stronger binder between uh, the aggregates themselves and the aggregates in the cement binder. Again, it's important to maintain a balance between these two textures. Size classification is also another uh, classification system for aggregates. So it, now we're looking at the size of the aggregate to classify it. So if it's less than five mils, uh, the aggregate would be considered as a fine aggregate. Uh, the way it's done is typically in a lab, if it passes a sieve that is about five mils, then you would consider it as a fine aggregate. On the other hand, coarse aggregates are usually, they usually have sizes that exceed five mils, uh, and they would be retained on a sieve that is about five mils in size. Density is also another classification that's adopted for aggregates. So you look at the density of the aggregates and then you classify the aggregates based on the density. So heavy aggregates are usually ones with a density of about 2.4 or more tons per meter cubed. Uh, if you've got light aggregates, then they have a density that's less than 2.2 tons per meter cubed. And anything in between would be classified as a medium aggregate. What about strength of your aggregate? Strength is important because as I said, a major reason that you have aggregates in your concrete mix is to resist the loads on your concrete structure. So you need to make sure that the aggregates are of sufficient strength. Now the strength of the aggregate is measured similar to uh, in, in the same units as uh, the, the measurements that we take for concrete. So it's in megapascals. Uh, that's how we assess the strength of your aggregates. Uh, on the screen in front of you, you see uh, several aggregate types. And next to these aggregates, uh, you have the strengths. So sandstone, for example, is between 35 to 90 MPA. Granite is 27 to 275, so clearly stronger MPA. Um, so, you know, depending on the aggregates that you end up with in a concrete mix, you will impact the strength of the overall concrete that's uh, produced. These strengths are all assessed in a lab setting. Now, finally, these important aspect of gradation of aggregates. As I said early on in the video, it's important to ensure that in your concrete mix, the aggregates are graded well. And a well graded uh, aggregate structure looks like uh, the image that you can see in front of you on the screen. So you have large uh, aggregates and you have small aggregates. The large aggregates are important uh, because typically you know, they are stronger the small ones would fill in the voids and that would ensure that you have a compact mix. And this is what we're trying to achieve. Now a poorly graded uh, mix, concrete mix would typically have aggregates of one size. Uh, and that's poor, that's bad because the, the pores between uh, these massive uh, aggregates, there's nothing to block them if you don't have small aggregates. Uh, and that can lead to issues in terms of the overall concrete that's uh, that's produced at the end. So make sure that you have sizes that range between very large to very small. And if you do so, then you'll end up with a well-graded uh, concrete mix. I hope this, this video has explained to you the purpose and the impacts that aggregates uh, have on a concrete mix. 
it's important to, as I said, realize that there's also uh, various classifications of aggregates. So uh, make sure that you uh, go through it and make sure that you understand uh, the aspects that were discussed in the video.